Yo, crypto nation and mining family. Crip crypto nation and mining family. What's going on? And of course, like always, it's not financial advice. Yo. Yo, Crypto Nation and Mining Family, what's going on? Um, I'll tell you what's going on. We got some really cool stuff coming up, guys. I mean, really, really cool. Some, some interesting changes going to be coming to the channel, um, which I'm going to be bringing in uh, my good friend, Crypto Mikel. We're going to start doing Saturday night live streams. Um, we'll be doing that at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. So, guys, stay tuned. I don't know if we're going to do it this starting this weekend. Probably will, just so that we keep the flow. Because uh, we were doing this on Decentralized TV. Uh, they've since pivoted to a new direction. And... We are no longer contributors on their channel anymore because of the direction that they're going, which gives me time to start focusing back here. Yo. Uh, so me and Mikel will be doing great stuff here. Um, so stay tuned every old Saturday night here, guys. Yo. Um, and I'm going to be bringing in some friends uh, beyond, beyond Crypto Mikel. Uh, so, still working out the kinks on that one, but it looks like not this week, uh, probably starting next week, more than likely, we'll be doing a Friday night uh, live stream too. Yo! So, we're about to get a whole lot more busier here, guys. Um, Friday nights will be more of like a chill and chat. Um, getting you know talking about you know current events relative stuff you know all that juicy tidbits well me and Mikkel will do live streams on all that good juicy mining knowledge yo um, so stay tuned with all the new changes that we're gonna be bringing here so all this for you guys <clears throat> you want to know what else is for you guys check it out boom hotrodmining.com guys um, come on down here, help support the channel. You can buy cool hats like this, uh, get some awesome t-shirts, even like this one. Check this out from my man, Martin Ham, who is one of our community members, guys. Yo, um, made this one for me to be able to put on an awesome t-shirt just like this. Um, so if you like this, hop on down to hotrodmining.com. Check one out. Yo. So without any further ado with all that awesome uh, good stuff that we're going to be bringing in let's get into today's little tidbits so amd thread ripper 3000 series of course is coming out uh, <clears throat> i've been paying attention to it just because i like my thread rippers but i, I can't get this one two reasons i'm not made of money so the price point on these things are just out of my, out, way out of my price range. I can't even mess with them. Um, I have to buy a whole nother motherboard on top of it. So two turnoffs on my end, because um, your their top of the line's coming in at two thousand uh, dollars. Their uh, the the entry level thirty nine sixty X is coming in at one thousand three hundred ninety nine dollars. So. You know that to me just puts it out of the range. Now, if you're mining, Mo if you're wanting to mine Monero, and you pick up one of these to mine Monero, let me know how this bad boy actually performs. Especially if you get the the 1970X or the 3970X. I'm sorry. Um, if you grab that one, let me know how that performs on that Monero. Um, or if you get one of these things for yourself because. You're, um, you're using it at, for work, as a workstation, uh, editing, making stuff, all that cool, awesome stuff you would do to grind. Yo. Um, you can even check it out and just test it on, like, Loki, because Loki's already using RandomX. 
and you should be able to see how this thing would perform right off the bat. Uh, so, boom, and you can even put it on the Monero test net and check it out there too. If you guys have, you plan on doing it, or you already have, drop in your numbers below. I would love to know what the actual real world test is. Because uh, all I can do is speculate on where this thing should be. Um, I'm thinking it'll be over 10,000 hashes a second um, at 250 watts. Now, you're going to want to water block this thing because of the fact of the wattage on there, unless you want to get yourself a really good, uh, like, Noxua cooler or something like that that can handle, you know, a 500 watt uh, CPU properly. Uh, but it, it, I believe that they're recommending water blocking this thing, which is a first in my, that I've ever seen that they are actually recommending it. Uh, for maximum performance so that and then if you're comparing that like you're like I'm, I'm a gamer I'm gonna stick with an Intel with an Nvidia graphics card and I'm gonna have the best gaming experience possible uh, that you would be right on uh, but at the same time AMD CPU versus an Intel you're not gonna notice the difference swinging at a game at a video game because most of that process is done through the GPU. And by saying that you want an, in, uh, an NVIDIA in there for your gaming experience, you're gonna have the best gaming experience that that particular card you choose can perform. Um, NVIDIA has been the top of the game for a while now. Um, Intel, I mean, uh, not Intel, but Intel will be making a graphics card coming up soon, but AMD, has been targeting the uh, the entry level market so for people who are trying to build on a budget AMD is a great option uh, but for CPUs the i9 10980XE which is their high, uh, high end uh, CPU now is coming in under a thousand dollars so price point wise they're better than AMD with that but workstation wise AMD gaming performance wise if you're looking for just that nominal difference you can go with the in, uh, with the Intel's so you know it is you know it's like in when you're seeing these target temp uh, target wattages this is like max and I don't we don't even know how they do this like they could put the the CPU onto a sensor and then see what it max draws from there. Are they doing it from sensors in the die, in the die itself? Who knows? They don't standardize it. Both companies test it differently. So until they standardize that, their uh, peak wattage targets mean nothing to me. I don't care. Um, I will measure it off the wall if I wanted to know for sure and then kind of gauge in how many fans you got and all that good stuff uh, but talking about AMD a little bit here with their GPUs power color is lot has long is launching their RX 5700 or they are no they already did uh, the RX 5700 XT liquid devil uh, so, if you guys are familiar with them at all, their Red Devil is their top of the line uh, air cool. Now they've got a liquid cooled solution, and it's got the best clock on there for a liquid cooled solution at a $600 price point. So it is a little bit uh, higher on the price on there, considering you could theoretically get a Red Devil and that's probably a little bit cheaper than this and then get your own ek water block but you're not going to have it looking as nice and clean as this uh, so i do like the look of it um, and it does come with a uh, couple of different dives in there but mining wise i wouldn't be going after this that's too much of an expense to have this card uh, but I do the look of it though. Um, it is a binned card, so what it what it means to be binned is that 
they basically went through all the PCBs that they had. Oh, this, this is a nice photo right here. Boom, right? But what they did is that they went through and all the, the PCBs that they got, they went overclocked it and saw how each one of them performed. And all the ones that they were able to, with stability, overclock further, they put into a special little category. And those usually get earmarked for the Red Devil and now the Liquid Devil. So if you're looking for the best performance, this would be it. Um, it's got the better VRMs in there, uh, better capacitors. So, and the cooler itself has been customed by EK to properly cover the memory modules, the CPU, um, and the VRMs. So, the card actually performs better longer without thermal throttling. It does have RGB. Um, I'm not sure if it's like fully addressable headers on there. I believe it is. Uh, with software, you can, I think you can change it. I would almost have to really see here, hold on here. Is it just blue? Or you actually, I do know it's got a BIOS switch on there, which is nice, you know, but I would always put it into performance mode. There, there's no other reason to have it go the other way. Um, <clears throat> but custom water block on here, it's nice, but this is for the enthusiast making a display computer, something for show. Uh, my case that I have for my PC, it's got a little spot that I could put this where it puts the, the front of this up against the uh, the front uh, plexiglass so it shows this off. Because if you put it into the motherboard, you're seeing this side. Uh, so that's why it's made more for display. Um, and then you have to have uh, a PCIe slot extender, a uh, full PCI slot. You can't use one of your mining rig risers on here, guys. The, the buy one slot will not put video out clean enough. It'll put it out. It's just not gonna be up to full potential, guys. So if you are wanting this to, to perform nice, you either have to get a, a full PCIe extender or you put it in and you get to look at it like this. Either way, it'll perform just fine. Uh, but that's just me. Um, I wouldn't be going after this particular card for mining, uh, nor would I be going after it for gaming. I, Nvidia happens to just be the dominating one for gaming and as of now, mining also. Some of the reasons why I pay attention to what the NVIDIA is coming out with. So they've got the 1650 Super custom models that have come out, uh, which is pretty nice. It, this basically is the card that should it should have been whenever it got released, but I'm sure that they were trying to burn off their GDDR5 memory modules. Now that they've burnt out, you know, gotten rid of all their old leftover memory modules, they're able to come out with the Super, which is now implemented with the GDDR6 memory modules. Uh, they didn't do anything else with the card. The card is essentially the same thing. Okay, so you would think that the performance really shouldn't be that much. That's where you'd be wrong. So, interesting thing. This thing with the, the 1650 Supers with the GDDR6 memory modules in there, even though they're only four gigabytes, the faster memory allowed the boost clock rate to be higher. So the boost clock rate is right behind the 1660 Super. So in my opinion, I would be going after either one of them. If I had a choice and I could only choose a 1660 Super, and a 1650 Super, try to find a deal on it. I don't think you're gonna see that any difference between the two, which is kind of surprising that they're within margins of each other. Uh, why they would make two cards compete that close. And they're really, you know, you're talking the 1650 Super starting off at a price point of 160 bucks versus the 1660 Super starting off at 
229. Um, of course, your top end models will be a little bit higher. So I would imagine that like the, <clears throat> the ASUS ROG Strix would be probably 200 to 220 being the top tier. Um, and believe it or not, it does, the, the ROG Strix has the best boost clock on there. And for mining guys, that's what you need to pay attention to is what you can boost it up to under full load. And this one boasts an 18, 15, uh, uh, 1,815 megahertz on the clock to be boosted, which that means it's better than the cheapest 1660 Super. So if you're able to get your hands on that one for a decent price, that would be the way that I go. I love my ROG Strix. That's what I have here. That's what my motherboard is and my main PC. Uh, I've had the best luck with them with performance. Uh, so that's just my two Satoshis on that aspect. <clears throat> So the, you know, like I was saying with the 5700s, with the bins, ROG Strix are all binned. Top, top tier. Um, and then, you know, it's like, it's also a dual fan on there, so it's got the best cooling solution on it. With these cards only having a single six pin connector on there, the target point of power is going to be lower. So you don't have to have like a crazy cooler around here. These things don't pull a lot of wattage. So that also could be a determining factor of which one you want to go to. If I can get the 1650 Super, the ROG Strix Edition, if I can mine on that one, get the same performance as the 1660 Super, but I'm pulling a little less wattage to do so. Dude, that there in itself is a win, bonafide win. Uh, so when you're picking out cards, always kind of do your own research. I can't stress that enough. Um, they do make single span variants. Again, they don't pull a lot of wattage. They don't have to have huge coolers on them. Um, does it mean that these ones are less performing back in the day it would be that would be what it would uh, would have been the, the dual fans you'd have the higher overclocks on them um, the better performance so that's probably what will be here too a single fan be the same card it's just not going to be a binned one so keep that in mind alright this is not binned um, then you got the EVGA super Super, super clocked ultra with their dual fans uh, I like my dual fans they just they usually have the better overclocks in my from what I've found um, something like this if you're out of the country you're going to be able to get this or if you find it on the second hand market you'll be able to get the Galax uh, this is usually something that doesn't come out of uh, out of Chiggity China so <clears throat> even though they kind of got a an interesting look on them. I'll give them that. Then you come into one of them that I, I use a lot of gigabytes. Um, I've had great luck with them. But this is not the Gamer X edition, which for them would have been their binned version. So they're not offering a binned version on the 1650 this time. So eh, it is what it is, right? Uh, <clears throat> and no 3D actually gave a, a little blowout of their PCB. So this is the cooler being removed. If you guys have watched my uh, GPU maintenance, you would have seen me taking everything apart and cleaning off the thermal paste off of here, uh, cleaning dust off of anything that can collect it in the corners. Um, I like the idea that they actually put a rear-facing power plug on here. If you have it in your PC, helps with power uh, cable management. Or if you have it in your rig, if you see here, let me see, here, pull, pull up the big screen. I've got the power cable and it's coming straight up over the top. 
if it came out the back side, I'd be able to drop it straight down immediately. And it'd actually look a little cleaner. Um, but if you see here, they've only got four gigs of memory on here. Each one of these are one gig memory modules. <clears throat> so there's actually room for improvement on these. So these are probably the same PCB that they would use for the 1660, the supers, and they would have put two more memory modules on there and it would change the overclock a little bit. Just saying. I, uh, you know, that's just what I've actually seen. I've seen where they've, you know, they've leave, they intentionally leave these blank and maybe on another product model, they're gonna fill it out. Uh, <clears throat> so that's pretty much the, the lowdown on all of that. These things should perform fairly well. Uh, so I'm not gonna recommend you get either one of them. It's if you're choosing between the 1660 Super and the 1650 Super, whichever is on sale, guys. I don't think you're gonna go wrong in any case. Um, <clears throat> so, if you guys have any questions or comments, certainly drop them in down below. I would love to hear what you guys think about any of the topics that I have covered. And guys, stay tuned for the new contributions that we're gonna be bringing in to my channel. Um, it's gonna be amazing. I'm gonna have great people on here. Um, so stay tuned. And like always, while you're down there dropping in some great comments, smash that Lizzie like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification just in case it got turned off. And like always, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.